tight top. European Union stories from the Uni UK include polls in Britain learn that people from different races can live together. Latest Galileo satellite has arrived at the European Space Agency's test centre. And European elections, some things are bigger than UKIP. Gas can spark prosperity if we work with the EU. Plus, in our letters section, paranoia. It's Friday, 9th of May. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Polls in Britain learn that people from different races can live together. There are few people more enthusiastic about Britain than Witold Sobkow, Poland's ambassador to the UK. Almost evangelical in his praise, Mr Sobkow believes that the numbers of people who emigrate here should be celebrated as a reflection of its success. I love Britain, he says, sitting in the gilt-edged opulence of the Polish Embassy, a Georgian townhouse in London's Portland Place. I love the monarchy, the castles, palaces and the landscapes. I don't even mind the weather. It's a perfect place to live. I often say you are a victim of your success. People concentrate on immigration and numbers, but they don't ask why people come here. Why don't they go to other countries? Well, because they feel at home here. The measure of success is the numbers. And the numbers certainly have been big. Next week it will be 10 years since Poland joined the EU, along with nine other new members from Eastern Europe. The last Labour government predicted just 13,000 people would move to Britain from these nations after 2004. But more than one million arrived in one of the biggest waves of immigration seen in this country ever. Now, whether you think this is a positive or a negative, the bottom line is that this is a key issue that surely must be top of the agenda for any politician. It's interesting that only one mainstream party has focused their campaign around this issue. Of course, jobs is always a key plank for any election campaign, but when one thinks what the default response is likely to be, you're left wondering if some political campaign managers have mm, missed the boat, so to speak. Latest Galileo satellite has arrived at the ESA's test center. Now, just a quick reminder about our coming Table Talk discussion show next Thursday at noon. First of all, we're delighted at the popularity of the show. The last show had over one and a half thousand viewers watching it live as it aired on our website. Next week's show promises to be even more controversial, and we have an extended panel of guests, including Peter Brown, who will be talking us through some shocking revelations about the EU amendments to the Lisbon Treaty, just four months after it was signed, and pushing through draconian powers hidden under the table. Doug Coulter, former lead technology advisor to President Jimmy Carter during his Carter administration in the US, and political rapper, songwriter and music producer Gadman Dubs, the unit team and, of course, my co-host Trevor Coleman. We will be looking at the European Space Agency's Copernicus and Sentinel satellite programs, and we will be asking, is the EU building an Orwellian state? So, put it in your diary, Thursday, 15th of May, noon, live on theunituk.com, Google+, and our YouTube channel. Now, Europe's latest Galileo navigation satellite has arrived at the agency's technical centre in the Netherlands for testing, as the previous two satellites are prepared for shipping to French Guiana for launch this summer. The new satellite travelled safely and close within an air-conditioned and environmentally controlled container from manufacturer OHB in Bremen, Germany, to the ESA's technical centre, Estec, in Nordvik, the Netherlands. The container was unsealed only once the satellite had completed its journey by road to the clean room conditions of the centre, Europe's largest site for spacecraft testing. Meanwhile, the previous two Galileo satellites have completed their long test campaign and are being readied for shipping to Europe's spaceport in French Guiana for launch together by Soyuz. 
Europe's first four Galileo satellites are already in orbit, the minimum number needed for achieving a position fix. This initial quartet has demonstrated the overall system works as planned, while also serving as the operational nucleus of the coming full constellation. Next come the 22 full capability satellites being built by OHB, incorporating navigation payloads produced by Surrey Satellite Technology Limited in the UK. European elections. Some things are bigger than UKIP. On May 22nd, voters go to the polls in the European Parliament elections. Such an election ought, in theory at least, to generate a vigorous public debate about what kind of European Parliament and what kind of Europe the people of this continent want for themselves for the next five years. But instead, in practice, such a debate never even begins here in Britain. Once again, this year, just as last time round in 2009, it is at risk of being drowned out by an almost Manchian battle and whether Britain has any place in Europe at all. Now, Nick Clegg has set out the argument for staying in, not getting out. Mr Clegg and his party deserve respect for their principled readiness to make this case. The leaders of our other major parties ought to be readier to do the same. But the argument that we ought to be having about Europe in 2014 is not just the ultimate one about staying or going, it's also about the kind of Europe we build for our common welfare. It's about things like economic strategy, governance, borders, welfare, climate change and Russia. These are the questions that will shape the next five years and beyond in our part of the world. These are also the questions that any British government, including the current one, has to face month in and month out, in its dealings with its partners. The rest is simply noise. We have too much noise and not enough thought when we talk about Europe. Well, from our exploits so far on social media, we find that here in the UK we have too much mudslinging and name-calling, coupled with sentimental claptrap and little to no fact-based argument. You'd have thought that someone other than us at the unit would have pointed out that the EU presidential election isn't an election at all. The whole charade of the televised debate, with which incidentally got completely overlooked by the UK media, would have left people asking the question, well, how do we vote for one of these folks to be our glorious leader? Well, of course, you can't and you won't because the president is appointed, just like the other 28 members of the ruling elite class called the EU Commission. Uh, that's the uh, EU's executive arm, as the mainstream media so gleefully likes to point out. Gas can spark prosperity if we work with the EU. The cost of energy has become an increasing concern for households and industry alike right across Europe. Indeed, the UK regulator Ofgem's recent proposal to refer the energy supply and generation market for a full competition review has been just the latest manifestation of this. Now, we welcome this proposal and it's now crucial that the UK's Competition and Markets Authority is left free from distraction free from attempts to preempt its findings and able to conduct a thorough review with an authoritative outcome. This is vital if the UK market is to retain investors' confidence, command consumers' trust and give generators and suppliers the regulatory and political certainty needed to invest the £110 billion required in this country to keep the lights on in this decade alone. But it is a mistake to think all of the answers for the UK market lie in the UK. In fact, this country is not an energy island, but rather part of a heavily interlinked European and global sector. Now, there's not a single fracking mention of the political intention to start drilling everywhere for fracking gas. But you can bet your grandma's pension that the political intention is to tell the anti-fracking protesters to kiss their fracking... Paranoia. More letters from you folks out there supporting us with your thoughts, views and opinions, for which we are very grateful, so please do keep them coming in. Today's letter is from Ernie, who says, Hi Andrew, I have watched the video and liked it, but also very troubled because the comments made by those taking part confirm my fears. Others say paranoia. About the EU... I am currently reading Mein Kampf because I seem to remember Adolf writing about his plan for Europe once he'd conquered it, and those plans are similar to the EU's long-term goals. Now, the question I sent to the BBC for the Farage-Clegg debate was as follows. 
The Anti-Common Market League in 1971 placed an advertisement in the Sunday Express newspaper listing ten predictive reasons why Britain should not join the common market. They were very accurate. The reasons were food prices up by 50p per week, 1971 values, immigrants from the continent admitted without restriction, laws made in Brussels, not at Westminster, common market taxes imposed on Britain to subsidise continental agriculture, Commonwealth trade cut to favour the common market, burden of 1,000 million each year on balance of payments, and Britain no longer self-governing, no appeal to British courts from common market regulations, independent Britain reduced to a province of Europe, and the common market is forever. There's no provision for withdrawal. So why does Mr Nick Clegg think Britain should surrender any sovereignty simply to trade with Europe? Well, Ernie, we believe you're spot on to ask these questions. The price the UK is paying for membership of the European Trading Club is an expensive one. You would have thought with so much on the table, the pontificating political class would have at least had the sensibilities to ask Joe Public for their opinion. In today's video library, we continue our push to draw people's attention to our video, Betrayed. The feedback we're getting regarding this film is remarkable, and we're delighted. Take, for example, this one from David Pittman. Dear Mr. Coleman, congratulations on a superb presentation of the facts in your video. It is a very professional presentation and I hope will open the eyes of the unbelievers. It is now essential to get this message to as many who will sit and view it. I have sent it on to all my contacts and hope they will do likewise. Thank you for your very professional efforts, which I hope will be rewarded at the next election. Well, thank you, David, for taking the time to let us know your thoughts and, of course, for passing on the video to your friends and colleagues. So far, this film has been viewed almost 10,000 times on our YouTube channel and we have distributed over 3,000 DVDs. Now, imagine this. Our newsletter goes out each day by email to over 5,000 people. If each one of you reading it recommended to just three of your friends to take a look at the film, we would get to over 25,000 views almost instantly. So, what are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Get on your email now. Links to the video are below. Now remember, visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.